Welcome to the instruction video of our budget spreadsheet. In this video, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up and customize this spreadsheet. The first tab you will find is the README tab. In the README tab, you'll find some helpful links, including the video tutorial you're currently watching, our tips and tricks and FAQ pages, and a link to our Etsy shop where you can send us a message if you have any questions after watching this video. You will also find quick instructions and some spreadsheet information. If you ever want to start over, you can click the New Template button to create a new copy of the original spreadsheet. Now let's go to the Start tab. At the top, you can check this little box to highlight all the fields in the spreadsheet that can be edited. We recommend doing this during setup to make sure you don't accidentally change any fields that shouldn't be changed. We've also protected all other fields that may contain some spreadsheet formulas, so if you try to edit a field that shouldn't be edited, you will see a warning appear, and if that happens, simply click Cancel to avoid any changes. The first thing you can do is change the currency symbol. The default is a dollar sign, but you can change it to any currency you want, and it will update everywhere in the spreadsheet. In this field, you can add any remaining amount you may have in your account, that you want to include in this budget. Next, you need to fill in your categories for income, savings, expenses, bills, debts, and subscriptions. So for example, under income, you might have a first paycheck, and a second paycheck, and a bonus, for example. Basically, you can enter any categories you want. And I would also like to note that for bills, there is an extra bills category by default which you can use for one-time payments or irregular bills. Now I'm just going to quickly fill in the other categories to show you how it works. If you scroll down a bit, you will be able to set up your savings and debt. And when you enter information here, the savings and debt dashboard will automatically update based on these details. In this table, you will also see that the categories we previously entered have already been updated for us. Now, what you can do is for each of your savings, you can add a target amount, any amount you've already saved, and you can choose to have a fixed amount that you plan to save each month, or set a goal date by which you want to complete your goal. For example, let's say we have a goal of $20,000 for a wedding. We've already saved $7,000 and we'd like to reach this goal by the 1st of June, 2026. For a car, let's say we have a goal of $15,000, a starting amount of $5,000, and we plan to save $300 every month. It might be good to know that you can't set both monthly contribution and goal date for the same savings, because when you set a fixed monthly contribution, the spreadsheet will calculate how many months you need to save that amount to reach your savings goal. And if you set a goal date, the spreadsheet will calculate the exact amount you need to save for each month. Also, any of these columns is completely optional. So for example, let's say we've saved $5,000 for an emergency fund, but we don't have a specific goal and we save money whenever we can, we can just leave all the other fields empty. Now scroll a little further down to the Debt Setup table. Begin by setting the start date, and let's say you would like to start in January 2025. Then choose between the Debt Snowball and Debt Avalanche Payoff methods. After that, you'll need to add the starting balance, minimum monthly payment, and interest rate for each of your debts. Now I'm going to add some fictional amounts to show you how it works, but basically, these are just examples, and it will be more accurate when you add your debt information. When you're done, you'll see that the minimum monthly payment will be calculated for you. If you want to pay a little more towards your debt, you can add an additional amount in this field. For example, let's say you want to pay an extra $200 on top of your minimum payment each month, and with that, we finish setting up our savings and debt. Now, let's go to the Budget tab. As you can see, the categories we entered in the Start tab have been updated on the Budget tab. Now what we also recommend doing is to basically create a template of this Budget tab and to duplicate it for each month. 
This way, every time you want to start a new month, all you have to do is just adjust those planned amounts if needed, of course. And also, if you accidentally delete any formulas, you'll always have this budget template as a backup tab to duplicate whenever needed. To create a template, you can start by entering budget amounts for each category. So for example, let's say you expect to receive $2,500 for your first paycheck and $1,500 for your second paycheck, and you can expect a $500 bonus. Now you should basically distribute this income across savings, expenses, bills, debts, and subscriptions. Here you can see that we currently have $4,500 available for budgeting, and if we add some amounts for expenses, for example, you will see that the amount left for budgeting will start to decrease. You can allocate all of your income to these categories and end up with zero, or you can leave some funds for the next month if you'd like. Now I'll quickly fill in these budget amounts for the remaining categories. Finally, you can add due dates for bills, debts, and subscriptions, and they will automatically appear in the calendar. You don't have to enter them in order because they'll be automatically sorted for you. Now that you've created the template, you should duplicate this budget tab. To do that, simply right-click on the tab name and select Duplicate. And you can also rename it, so let's say we are budgeting for January 2025. And you should also update the month and year in the top left corner. We have also included a rollover option, so if you want to use leftover money from the previous month, you can just check this little box. And of course, since this is the first month we're budgeting, it will show the starting balance that you entered in the Start tab. But for the next month, you'll see that it will show the exact amount left from the previous month. You can also add a budget amount if you think you'll have some money left over each month. The actual sections will update based on the transactions from the Log tab. So let's go to the Log tab to see how it works. In this tab, you should log all your transactions. Simply enter the date, choose the transaction type, select a category, and enter the amount. For example, let's say that on the 1st of January, you received a paycheck of $2,500. Once you enter it, you'll see that amount appear in the actual section for the first paycheck. Basically, when you log transactions, the spreadsheet will automatically update these actual sections for each category, and all the charts will update as well. Now I'll quickly add some additional transactions to show how this works. Now, if we go to the Budget tab, you can see that the actual sections and charts have been updated. Here you can see how much money you have left to budget and spend, as well as your total income and spending for the month. You can see how your balance has changed throughout the month, and you can compare your planned and actual amounts. You will also be able to see the distribution of your income by different categories and the distribution of your spending on savings, expenses, bills, debts, and subscriptions. In addition, you can see your top 10 spending categories. For each new month, simply duplicate the budget template again, and you can delete or hide the completed month. Now let's go to the Calendar tab. As you can see, the bills are already shown on the calendar based on the due dates we entered on the budget tab. Also, these bills will be sorted in chronological order for you, and basically, all you have to do is update the month and year here at the top, and during that month, when you pay your bills, you can simply check these boxes, and you'll see that the paid bills will be highlighted so you can easily see what's been paid. Now, you can also choose whether the week starts on Sunday or Monday. You can add your paydays, so for example, let's say you get your first paycheck on the first of the month and your second paycheck on the 17th and you'll see that these paydays also appear on the calendar. We also recommend creating a template for the calendar tab because this way you won't have to uncheck these boxes for each new month and it would also be a good idea to leave these extra bills empty for the template. And then for each new month when you make a duplicate you can just add specific extra bills that may appear in that month. 
So basically, to create a template, make sure these boxes are unchecked and you haven't put any extra bills in yet. And just like with the budget tab, just right click on the tab name and select duplicate. And you can also rename the calendar tab. Now, all you have to do is update the month. So let's say it's currently January 2025. And also, you might have an additional bill for January. For example, it could be an annual bill that's due on the 5th, and you'll see the annual bill appear on the calendar. So when paying bills, simply check these little boxes, and the calendar will automatically update, highlighting the paid bills. For each new month, follow the same steps as with the Budget tab. Simply delete the Completed Calendar tab and duplicate the template for the next month. Now, let's go to the Savings tab. And as you can see, all the information we entered in the Start tab has been updated here for us. And basically, in this tab, you don't need to enter any additional information. The entire tab will automatically work for you, updating based on the savings transactions from the Log tab. In this table, you can see all your savings goals. And for each of them, you will see how much you've saved in total how much you need to save this month, how much you've saved for the current month, how much is left to save, and how many months are left until you reach the goal. And if you haven't set a monthly contribution or goal date on the Start tab, it will show ongoing for that specific fund. You'll also see your progress, or basically the percentage of the goal that's been saved. Additionally, you can compare your saved amounts and your goal amounts for each of your savings. You can see the percentage of your total savings goal that's been saved. You can see your overall savings goal, how much you've saved in total, how much is left to save, and the amount you plan to use for savings this month. Now let's go to the Debt tab. So on the Debt tab, you will see that your debts are already updated for you, and all you need to do is update the month and year to show the correct information. And basically, your debts will be sorted based on the payoff method you've chosen. And for each debt, you'll see the payments and balances for each month until they're fully paid off. You'll also see the projected payoff dates and the percentage that's been repaid for each of your debts. And basically, once you've paid off one of your debts, its minimum payment, along with any extra amount, will be applied to the next debt, continuing until all debts are paid off. And what you can also see is that on the left side, you will find an overview where you can see all the information you need for each of your debts for the selected month. This way, you don't have to scroll through the whole overview to find those payments. So for example, for credit card number one, we have to pay $270 this month, and your balance will be $4,750 at the end of the month once we've paid that $270. Then you'll be able to see how much you've actually paid this month. For example, we've already paid $100 toward that credit card, which we entered earlier in the Log tab. And it might be good to know that you can pay more than the expected amount toward your debt. So for example, if we pay $300 for the credit card this month, that amount will replace the expected $270, and all the other calculations after that have been updated for us. Now, if you know in advance that you will receive a bonus next month and want to use it to pay more towards your debt, what you can do is also add it to this plus or minus section. So for example, let's say you want to put an extra $300 toward your debt in February, and you'll see that the payment on that first debt will increase as a result. Similarly, if you want to reduce your payment for a specific month, just enter a negative amount, but be careful not to reduce it below the minimum payment. Additionally, in this tab, you can see the estimated date when all debts will be paid off and how many months are left until that date. You'll be able to see the percentage of your total debt that's been repaid. You'll also see the total amount of your debt that's been repaid, your initial debt balance, your debt balance at the end of the month, the total monthly payment, which is the minimum payment plus any monthly extra, and the total interest for the current month. When the month ends, simply select the next month, and your overview will update, and the row for the previous month will be crossed out. And that is basically how this spreadsheet works. 
If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching and have a great time.